Next, on 6 April 22, Melinda rented out a furnished room in her house to Jenny at a rent of £750 per month. Jenny continued to rent the room on the same terms until 5th July 23. Melinda continued to live in this house and paid for all the living expenses, of which 475 a month related to the room rented out to Jenny. The question is what is the Melinda's property income for the tax year 22-23 assuming that any beneficial elections are made. So here we have to apply the both rules like uh, if you are considering that uh, amount is 750 a month it means uh, it is 9000 a year. So 9000 is your property income. And the actual expenses are 475 per month. So these are 5700. So in accordance with normal assessment, the property income to be recorded as taxable income is 3300. Now we have to consider the relief available for rent a room and that allows us to deduct 7500 as expenses. So now we have a 1500 our property income from rent at home. So assuming that any beneficial elections are to be made, so beneficial for us is 1500 and this will be the answer. In the next question on 1st October 2022, so granted a 25 year lease of a freehold property in return for a premium of 20,000. So they are asking us to assess assessable property income for the tax year 22-23 in respect of the lease premium. Remember what is the rule? Premium multiplied by 51 minus N divided by 50. This is the formula to calculate the assessable income in respect of premium. So here premium is 20,000 multiplied by 51 minus N stands for the lease period divided by 50. So it will be 20,000 multiplied by 26 divided by 50 and this will be 10,400. So A is again your option. In the next question, they are asking what is the Messi's property income for the tax year 22-23. Messi has a cottage which he lets out furnished for annual rent of 9600 payable monthly in advance. She incurred the following expenditure which was paid for on that dates that shown. On 6 April 2022, council tax for the year to 31st March 23, 900. On 6 October 2022, insurance for the year ended 30th September 2023, previous year insurance was 480. And in the third year, replace the refrigerator with a similar model 870. So remember one rule that uh, your property income will be, will be calculated on cash basis unless otherwise asked to you. So in cash basis, we need to consider whether this amount has been paid during this tax year or not. So all these three amounts are paid on 6 April 22, 6 October 22 and 9 December 22. All three dates are within this tax year of 22-23 which starts from 6 April 22 and ends on 5th April 23. So all, in, uh, all these in expenses are allowed as uh, allowable expenses. So your income to be recorded as property income would be 9600 minus 900, 540 and 870 and it will give you 870 and 540. So it is 7290 that is your income option B. Stephania only income is uh, from letting out furnished residential property none of which is qualifying furnished holiday accommodation. For the tax year 22-23 her taxable property income was 25,000 before adjusting for the following item. 
Payment of 500 to replace a damaged kitchen unit in a fitted kitchen. This is allowable expense 500. Second interest paid of 12,000 on a loan to acquire one of the property. Remember that interest payment is uh, recorded as the tax reducer, not as the allowable expense. It will not detect your property income. In fact, whatever amount of uh, interest has been paid at the rate of 20%, it will reduce your tax liability. So here in this question, they are asking about taxable property income. So that is why we are not considering interest 25,000 minus only 500. So it is 24,500 that is the income to be recorded. Next, Eva earned an annual salary of 55,000 throughout the tax year of 22-23. She used her own car for business travel and she traveled 14,500 business miles during the tax year 22-23. What is Eva's accessible employment income? Assuming her employer paid her 43 pennies per business mile. So here we need to consider what approved mileage allowance Eva entitled to receive. In accordance with rule, Eva is entitled to receive for first 10,000 miles, 45 pennies and for next 4,500 miles, 25 pennies per mile. So for the 10,000 miles, he, she, she will receive 4,500 in accordance with the approved mileage allowance and for next 4,500 miles, she will receive 25 pennies. So it is total 5625 she is entitled to receive. While she is receiving 43 penny per business mile. So what amount she is actually receiving from her employer is 43 penny. So it becomes 6235. As she is receiving more than she is entitled, so the difference is said to be included in her taxable income. So this is 610 amount that will be included her, in her taxable income. Her salary is 55,000 and the taxable benefit of 610 when added to this will give you a total amount of 55,610. Next, Christos, a higher rate taxpayer, is provided with the following benefit in the tax year 22-23 by his employer. You are required, what is his assessable value of benefit in the tax year 22-23? Number one, free use of staff canteen at a lunch time for 200 days. The canteen is available to all staff and the average cost of preparing a meal is £4. So remember that. If a facility is provided to all employees, this is said to be exempt. Nothing will be added as a taxable benefit for employee. Private medical insurance at a cost of 650 to his employer. Christos made a claim during the tax year 22-23 and the insurance provider paid 350. Doesn't matter what the cost has been provided by the insurance company. The taxable benefit to be included in employee income is the cost incurred by employer for providing such benefit. Again, the taxable income to be included in employee's income is the cost incurred by employer for providing such benefit. So here the cost incurred by employer is 650. So this will be recorded as taxable benefit. Now fifth, uh, five pound per week for the additional household cost incurred when he works from home so this is also exempt. So only cost that will be recorded as assessable value of his benefit is 650. Now a very important question. Ellen is provided with accommodation by her employer, which the employer purchased 35 years ago at a cost of 72,000. The property has an annual value of 2600 and had a market value of 245,000 when first made available to Ellen eight years ago. 
Ellen pays two fifty per month to her employer to live in the property. The accommodation does not qualify as job related, so you need to calculate the assessable benefit. So remember, first thing, the annual value is twenty six hundred, and there is nothing to be added for expensive accommodation charge. Why so? Because the original cost of the building or accommodation is seventy two thousand less than seventy five thousand. So this is the point. Note that regardless of the market value, this additional benefit is only charged if the original cost plus improvement completed before the start of the tax year is greater than seventy five thousand. So according to this rule, there is no charge for expensive accommodation. So twenty six hundred basic charge, nothing to be added as expensive charge. Total basic charge benefit twenty six hundred, but for this, Ellen is paying two fifty pound per month to her employer. So if she is paying two fifty pound per month, the total amount she is going to pay is three thousand, greater than the benefit she has received. So nothing will be added as her taxable benefit. Thiago is provided with a new diesel company car on 6 May 22, which he used for both business and private purpose. The car has a list price of 28,000, CO2 emission 157 gram per kilometer. The car meets the RD2 standard. Remember that for CO2 emission of 55 gram per kilometer, the appropriate percentage is 16%, and then for every 5 gram increase in CO2 emission. One percent will be added. So for one fifty-five grams, the additional percentage would be sixteen percentage. That is for basic fifty-five. Then for additional hundred CO two emission, the percentage to be added is twenty. So is this is total thirty-six percentage. Next, we need to consider the cost of car, which is given to you as twenty eight thousand. Multiply by thirty six percent, the appropriate percentage. But remember that you have to apportion the benefit if it has been provided for the part of the year. Here, the car is provided on six May twenty two. So, from six May twenty two to fifth April twenty three, this is a period of eleven months. So you need to calculate the benefit for the period of eleven months. So it is twenty-eight thousand multiplied by thirty-six percent multiplied by eleven divided by twelve. So it is nine thousand two hundred forty. That is to be recorded as benefit for Thiago. Vujan is provided with a loan on which he pays interest at the rate of one percent per annum by his employer. The loan was one lakh when it was taken out on six April twenty two, and he repaid forty thousand of the loan on six August twenty two. What is Vujan's beneficial loan benefit? Assuming the average method of calculation is to be used. So, as we are using average method, it means uh, we have to identify the outstanding amount, average outstanding amount, at the start of the year. The outstanding loan is one lakh, and as you are repaying forty thousand of this loan on six August, it means by the end of the year, the outstanding loan is of sixty thousand. As you have paid six forty thousand, the remaining amount of loan will be sixty thousand. So average of this will be eighty thousand. Now you have to calculate the amount of interest that. Vujin has to pay. This is eighty thousand into two percent. The amount of interest Vujin has to pay is sixteen hundred. But what Vujin pay as interest? He has paid interest at the rate of one percent. So from six April twenty two to six August twenty two, he has used one lakh loan. And paid one percent interest for the period of four months. So this will be three 
333 and for uh, next eight month he has used a loan of 60000 why so because he has repaid 40000 of amount of loan so this eight month period interest would be 400 so total interest that Vujan has pay is 733 he has to pay interest 1600 so 867 is his taxable benefit now in the next question they are asking us to identify by taking the appropriate box the treatment of each of the following bonuses Dong is implied as well as his annual salary he is also paid a bonus in April each year the amount of bonus is based upon his performance to the end of the previous calendar year now bonus of 2800 received on 6 April 22 in respect of year to 31st December 21 as he is receiving this bonus in the tax year 22-23 so on the basis of receipt it will be regarded in the tax income of 22-23 means it is taxable in the year tax year 22-23 second bonus of 3300 received on 3rd April 23 in respect of the year to 31st December 22 so again we will consider the receipt basis on receipt basis he has received that amount of bonus on 3rd April 23 which is in the tax year 22-23 so again this is taxable in 22-23 max is employed by star on 6th April 21 star provided max with a camera for his personal use the camera had a market value of 2000 on 6th April 21 on 6th April 22 star had gave the camera to Max for free the camera had a market value of 1400 on 6th April 22 so a uh, little complicated rule the rule is you have to consider two value first you have to consider the value market value when it was gifted so market value when this asset was gifted is 1400 first we have to consider this value secondly we have to consider the market value when asset is first time provided to the employee and that was 2000 but this amount will be reduced by the taxable benefit that had been included in employee's income in the previous year so from 6 April 21 to 6 April 22 that asset has been used by the employee so the benefit for the whole year at the rate of 20 percent has been included in the income of employee so this will be reduced and remaining amount will be considered so according to rule now we have to consider whichever is greater is your taxable benefit so in this case 1600 is greater so 1600 is your benefit again consider the point if the asset has been provided by employer to the employee for his personal use then the 20 percent of the value of that asset will be recorded as taxable benefit of employee this asset has been provided on 6 april 21 until 6 april 22 one year benefit has already been included in the taxable income of employee so what we have to consider we have to consider two figures first market value at the date of gift and that is 1400 second we have to consider the market value when first provided this asset to the employee that is 2000 but it should be reduced by the amount of taxable benefit already included in the income of employee so we have reduced that and remaining amount is considered as 1600 now the rule is whichever is higher next question on 6 June 22 Albert a marketing manager was reimbursed 500 by his employer in respect of subscription fee he had paid to the chartered institute of marketing and 200 in respect of train fares 
incurred traveling to meeting now which two of the following statement concerning the tax treatment of reimbursed expenses are correct so remember here that 500 reimbursed by employer in respect of subscription fee to a chartered institute is a exam benefit same is the case for train fares why it is so because this fare is incurred for traveling to meeting means this a business expense so both are exempt so we need to identify in which point they are mentioning that both are exempt the reimbursed subscription fee must be added to taxable pay and tax through the pay as you earn system this is wrong it should not be added it is an exempt income b the embers travel expenses must be added to taxable pay and tax through the pay as you earn system again wrong because again it is also exempt the reimbursement of subscription fee is exempt income so no action is required for tax purpose this is right this is an exempt income d the reimbursement of travel expenses is exempt income again right so no action is required albert must include reimbursed subscription fee on his return wrong albert must include reimbursed travel expenses on his tax return these are not benefit to be included in his uh, tax return so c and d are the right choice vicente is a sole trader when calculating his trading profit he has decided to the following expenses now question is what amount must be added back when calculating his tax adjusted trading profit first gift to ham- food hampers for 10 customer costing 450 in total so remember that if gift is a food item it is not allowable expense then hanifol has taken goods from his business for personal use the goods cost 850 pounds and have a selling price of 1100 he has made no entry in his books business account in respect of the goods except to record their original purchase by the business hanifol's trading profit prior to the year any adjustment required for the goods taken for own uses 247500 What is Hanifol's tax adjusted trading profit after making any necessary adjustment in respect of goods taken for personal use? So as far as rule is concerned, we have to consider that if there is uh, nothing has been recorded about the withdrawal of goods then we have to adjust this 1100 of amount. And as this in this question they have mentioned that he has made no entry in his business account in respect of goods except to record their original purchase we are not talking about original purchase we are talking about withdrawn of goods if in respect of withdrawn of goods something has been recorded like cost has been recorded then we only have to consider the profit margin but here in case of withdrawn of goods nothing has been recorded so we have to adjust this amount of 1100 aur is amount ko adjust karne se aapke paas टोटल आ जाएगा टू लैख फोर्टी एट थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड सो दिस इज योर आंसर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्योर रन्स अ सोल ट्रेडर बिजनेस एंड ऑन फर्स्ट जनवरी ट्वेंटी टू शी पेड ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्रीमियम फॉर अ ट्वेंटी ईयर लीज ऑन एन ऑफिस फ्रॉम विच शी विल रन हर बिजनेस वट अमाउंट कैन बी डिटेक्टेड इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ लीज प्रीमियम वेन कैलकुलेटिंग फ्योर टैक्स एडजस्टेड ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट फॉर द ईयर एंड थर्टी फर्स्ट दिसंबर रिम्बर जब भी किसी क्वेश्चन में आपके पास प्रीमियम के हवाले से क्वेश्चन पूछा जाए तो यू नीड टू कंसिडर वेदर यू हैव आस अबाउट द टेनेंट और फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लैंड लॉर्ड टेनेंट के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से जो भी अमाउंट वो प्रीमियम की पे कर रहा है वो उसके प्रॉफिट में से उसके अमाउंट में से जो भी कैलकुलेट हो रही है उसमें से डिडक्ट कर दी जाती है एंड फ्राम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लैंड लॉर्ड उसकी इनकम में शामिल की जाती है सो यहाँ पे आप कंसिडर करें फ्लोर टर्न अ ट्रेड सोल ट्रेडर बिजनेस एंड ऑन फर्स्ट सन बी शी पेड अ ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्रीमियम फॉर अ ट्वेंटी ईयर लीज शी पेड इफ शी इज पेइंग अ प्रीमियम सो इट मीन्स शी इज एक्टिंग एज अ टेनेंट सो इन दिस ऑफ टेनेंट हमें क्या करना है फर्स्ट वी हैव टू अप्लाई द फार्मूला विच इज़ ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्रीमियम मल्टीप्लाई बाई फिफ्टी वन माइनस ट्वेंटी 
divided by 50. According to this formula, what is the amount to be included? Multiply by 31 divided by 50 and this is 15,500. Now from the tenant's point of view, you have to consider it, what amount is to be deducted. So, what do you have to do with lease period? Se divide kar dena. Then it is the amount to be deducted from tenant's income, right? So, we again consider that we have to calculate the premium ke hawale se calculation from landlord ke point of view or tenant. Ke. If we have been asked to calculate the income from the point of view of landlord, then this is said to be income. But is this question they have asked from the point of view of tenant because tenant pay karta hai premium. So tenant ke liye kitni concession hogi, kitni amount is ki tax adjusted trading profit mein se deduct ki jayegi. So that is calculated by dividing this 15,500 amount by 20 year means lease period. Next, van sees trading on 31st December 2022 having been self-employed since 1st January 2008. On 1st January 2022, the tax written down value of her plant and machinery main pool was 6200. On 10th November, Van purchased a computer for 1600. All of the items included in the main pool were sold for 9800 on 31st December 22. Question is, what is the balancing charge which will arise on the disposal of main pool item upon the cessation of Van trade? So we need to consider that uh, the tax return on value is 6200. Then it has purchased 1600 ka computer. So your total is 7800. And he has sold it for 9800. So this is 2000 ka balancing charge. Aa jata hai. First you have to calculate what is the tax return on value plus the asset purchase. Because if you have a final year of trade, if you have purchased an asset, then AIA provide not be able So this is total amount 7800. Then less the disposal value gives you a balancing charge. Next question, Olive is self-employed, preparing her account to 5th April each year. She claims capital losses on car used in her business. The car has a CO2 emission of 65 gram per kilometer with 40% of Olive's mileage for private use. The car has a return on value of 12,000 on 6 April 22 and that was sold for 6,000 on 1st number. You have to calculate capital loans that Olive can claim in respect of tax year 22-23. So car ki value 12,000 thi, sale kar diya gaya 6,000 ka, to on disposal he is entitled for balancing allowance of 6,000. But is, uh, is 6,000 ke uh, balancing allowance ka 60% is provide kiya jayega due to business usage. 40% is for private purpose, so uspe capital loans claim nahi kiya ja sakta. So it is 3600. Which two of the following assets bought by sole trader will be allocated to the main pool for capital loans purpose? Delivery van costing 12,500 with 25% private use by the owner of the business. If owner is using some asset for private purpose, it will be recorded in private use column, not in main pool. Laptop computer costing 4500 with again 15% private use by the owner. Again, this will not be recorded in the main pool because it has a private use by the owner. Car with CO2 emission of 45 grams costing 17,500 with 25% private use by an employee. Remember that aapke paas agar owner private use kar raha hai to tab usse main pool mein record nahi kiya jata but agar employee private use ke liye car use kar raha hai it doesn't matter so it will be recorded in main pool it is the use by the owner for private purpose which is to be recorded in private use column car with a co2 emission of 75 grams and you solely use uh, for business purpose by the owner of the business if the car is solely used for business purpose, this can also be recorded as the in the main pool. Factory air conditioning system costing 1 lakh 10,000 with 27 years expected life. This is a special rate pool item, so it will not be recorded in the main pool. Packing machine costing 1 lakh 5,000 with a 24 year expected life. Again, this is a long life asset, so it will not be recorded in the main pool. 
and you prepare account for the 8 months to 31st March, the tax return on value in the main pool is 18,000. On 15 January 23, he purchased a new car with zero CO2 emission costing 12,260. It is used solely for business purpose by Andrew. What is the maximum capital loans? Andrew may claim for the 8 months period and at 31st March 2023. So you need to remember the rule about the first year allowance that first year allowance is never time a portion on the basis of number of months of uses. So first year allowance will be fully provided 12,000. 260. While in case of a return on allowance which is to be provided on main pool item of 18,000, this is to be provided for 8 months period. So 18,000 multiplied by 18 percent multiplied by 8 by 12. Return on allowances time apportion. This is 2160. So the total allowance that will be recorded is 14,420. Remember that first year allowance is never time apportion. It is written on allowance that is time apportion. Ronald has always prepared his account to 31st March. On 31st March 23, Ronald ceased trading. The tax return on value of the main pool at 1st April 2022 was 15,000. On 1st January 23, Ronald purchased a laptop solely for business costing 4,500. On 31st March 23, all the items in the main pool were sold for 14,550. Apart from the laptop, which was retained by the Ronald, the market value of laptop at that date was 4,150. None of the items in the main pool were sold for more than their original cost. So, what is the capital allowance or balancing charge for the year ended 31st March 23? So, first we have to record the tax return on value, which okay, is 15,000. We record kar lenge. Then you have purchased a laptop 4500 that will be recorded. Then all other assets are sold for 14,550 and these are not sold for more than original so this will be less. And then the new adjustment is that your laptop is retained by the owner. Right? So it is considered as it is disposed of at a market value and the market value is 4150. So after that, this will be 350 and 450, 800 value. This is said to be the balancing allowance. So remember one thing, if the NE asset is retained by the owner, it should be treated as disposed at the market value. Cora has always prepared her account through 31st October. On 1st May 2022, she purchased a building which he bought into use on 1st June 22. Cora spent 7 lakh on the land, 5 lakh 50 thousand on the structure and building and 30 thousand renovating the building. What is the maximum structure and building allowance Cora may claim for the year ended 31st October 2022. Remember that uh, rule is that structure building allowance is time a portion and, and it is not provided on land. So apart from land, uh, the 550,000 is to be spent on uh, building and 30,000 on renovating the building. So it is total 580,000 on which we have to consider the structure and building allowance at the rate of 3% and uh, the period that we need to consider. From the date it is bringing brought, brought into use from the 31st October. So it is a period of uh, June, July, August, September, October period of 5 months. So it is 7,250. 